For the sixth year in a row, Finland has been the world's happiest nation according to the World Happiness Report 2023. So what is happiness? How do we define happiness? Where do we find happiness? The US Cigna 2020 reported 79% of the Gen Zs and 71% of the millennials reporting sadness and happiness. And mind you, by the year 2030, 75% of the global workforce is going to comprise of Gen Zs and millennials. And if your current team, current, current team does not think mental health is an issue, it is coming. Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Naeem Sadiq, neurologist, neuropsychiatrist, founder and director of Plexus Neuro and Stem Cell Research Center. I have been practicing for the last 35 years and I've been lucky to have seen more than 600,000 patients in my career, ranging from the silent generation to the Gen Alpha. And what has been my journey in finding happiness, I'm going to sum it up in the next 10 to 12 minutes. And at the end of my talk, I'm going to reveal the ultimate secret which made me happy and which I believe will make everyone happy. So this entire story, I will try to sum, them, sum it up in eight simple points. But before that, what made me take this journey? As a child, whenever I would visit my family doctor, one ex-army doctor, Captain Srinivasan, his name was, I would see a lot of people sitting there with misery written on their face, depressed, worried, anxious, looking sick, having lost complete hope in life. You know, these people would enter the doctor's chamber, spend 15, 20 minutes with him and come out transformed, smiling, happy, full of energy. I was all stuck by this doctor and I said, okay, when I grow up, I have to become like him. I want to spread these smiles. I want to make everyone happy. And that's exactly what happened when I finished my 10th standard and I got my National Merit Scholarship. My mother wanted me to become a chartered accountant and pursue commerce. But no, I wanted to emulate my doctor Srinivasan. I joined medicine, I became a doctor and hence the journey continues. Now, what are these eight points which I think are very important for all of us? Point number one. Little things are not so little. The morning stretch when you wake up, the fresh aroma of your espresso, coffee or tea, the morning run, the agility with which you finish all your morning chores, the concerning smile or a genuine smile which you exchange with your neighbor or your co-passenger in the lift, or the affectionate waiting look which your dog gives you when you return back home very and tired. These are not little things. These are not insignificant. These are very, very important things in our life which we need to cherish. What if we are not able to do these tomorrow? Value them. Point number two, the importance of resilience. In my journey, I have had lots of patients. I specialize in neurology, specialize in diseases which are, which are degenerative, debilitating. The patients who have fought back, patients who have been able to recover fast are the ones who had the grit, who had the determination, who had the positive outlook towards life. And these are the people who were resilient. So the second important point is not to give up. Have a positive outlook, face the challenge and fight back. Point number three, empathy, which is a superpower. You all know what empathy is to be in the other person's shoes, to understand feel concern, with concern his or her situation. That's exactly what I've been doing and I have realized so many patients come to me seeking not only treatment 
but a sounding board by listening to them with concern with care and finding a proper solution for them i am able to provide solutions for most of these people without shifting them to the operation room giving them any injection or even giving a single tablet so empathy is a superpower point number 4 cherish the present moment live don't ruin your tomorrow thinking about today tomorrow will come with its own problems with its own worries with its own challenges and you're going to face them 2020 covid came and opened our eyes to enjoy the moment to live in the moment because we do not know what's going to happen tomorrow the moment my patients get a diagnosis of any of these degenerative diseases they come back to me doctor when am i going to die how long will i live can you increase my life span i tell them no i cannot increase your life span i cannot push your date of death i don't know i cannot add days to your life but yes i can help you add life to your days like the famous song in one of the old movies said marne se pehle jeena seekh lo let's live anyway we are going to die so cherish cherish the present moment the next point the importance of social connections human beings are social animals if you have somebody a friend family with whom you can share your joys and sorrows a shoulder on whom you can rest your head and pour out your worries value it cherish it because you're blessed by god to have such a relationship patients who have a strong social network who have a strong connection these are the ones who bounce back come out very very fast from their whatever disease they are suffering from so valuing the social connections the next point which is very very important is respecting the uniqueness of individuals every human is unique despite the diversities they have learn to respect that do not be judgmental i am a doctor i am a senior consultant i have been across the globe look at me i have tattoos all over i wear beads and bands and bracelets and rings i have earrings studs i do what i want to do i have been judged but then you don't be judgmental this builds trust this builds confidence so respect diversities and know that each human is unique god has made him special talking about uniqueness i would want to delve a little more on as another population a set of population which is very unique that is the children now the reason i want to talk a little more about this is because children are small adults you groom happy children today they are going to turn out to be happy adults tomorrow lot of millennial parents come to me seeking advice on nurturing seeking advice on how to parent them maybe having nuclear families staying away from their parents both husband and wife working having their own work stress and the child's unlimited access to the present generation present day in, uh, entertainment could be the possible reasons but then looking at the various types of parenting i always have been recommending i believed in that i have followed that and i advocate the authoritative style of parenting which strike a balance between being nurturing and responsive while maintaining the boundaries and structure now this results in children who feel safe who feel secure who are creative who have problem solving skills who have logical thinking who turn out to be confident and ultimately 
happy. That's exactly what we want. I want, all of us want our children to be confident, happy. That's this, this style of parenting gives rise to these children who in turn build a happy nation, a happy population. And finally, the most important thing which I had mentioned, I'm going to share with you the ultimate mantra of happiness. Having this sense of being responsible, the power of being, what is it? Do what you love. Do what you're good at. Do what the world wants, what the world needs. And do for which you are paid for. And do something from which you don't want to retire. As a doctor, 35 years I have practiced this. How do I define my happiness? What is it which gives me the drive? When I wake up in the morning, a morning filled with promises, I look forward to meeting so many new people with a variety of problems, with a variety of challenges. I look forward to sitting across them, listening to them, understanding their concern, unraveling their mysteries, diagnosing their condition, and finding a very easy, practical solution for them. And on the other hand, the patients whom I have already treated, when they come back to me for their follow-up, seeing someone who was bedridden walking now, somebody who could not speak singing a song now, somebody who was not able to think clearly solving a puzzle, or a child who had ADHD coming back to me showing the certificate of excellence. The parents bringing the child and the video of a, this child who was hitherto suffering from autism spectrum disorder, showing how the child is playing and singing with other children. A Parkinson patient who was tremulous and could not do her daily activities, gifting me a handcrafted work, showing me her Bhangra dance which she has been doing. Patient suffering from ALS, showing me the video of how he's riding his bike. Or the patient with dementia, 88 year old, who comes to me and gives me the pickle which he made on his own with the recipe which he was using 40 years back. That is happiness. I found my Ikigai. This is Ikigai. And I want you to search for your Ikigai. And I pray and hope you find that Ikigai and you find happiness. Thank you so much. Wishing you a very happy day and a happy future. Dr. Naeem Sadiq, thank you so much.